Greetings, Time Rider here. I've been asking other hobbyists to do builds with me all year. Originally, I called it a mystery build, and I decided that starting with this build, I'm going to call it what it really is, which is a featured artist build. And what good would it be if I didn't uh, introduce the people that I'm going to build with? So let me tell you about the artist that I'm building with today. His name is Chris, and Chris, if you're a her, I am profoundly sorry. Anyway, Chris runs a channel called CK Project X, and I first came to know him through our monthly Three Blind Mice builds. He's been with us from the beginning. Um, Chris is in the UK, and he's one of the best painters and concept people that I've ever seen. As of this morning, CK Project X had 999 subscribers. Surely, someone wants to be number 1,000. Anyway, on to the bet. This is, of course, the 1966 Corvette. The base price in the day was a shade over four grand, which is 32 grand in today's dollars. They built about 28,000 of them. It was supposed to be the last year of the second generation Corvette, but the new third generations, which were based on the Mako 2 design, were having some aerodynamic challenges and required more time. For handling, road adhesion, sheer power, the Corvette was tough to beat right off the assembly line. If you've never done an M2, try one. You'll probably pay a bit more for the casting, but they're very detailed. Uh, they make this casting in quite a few variations. The casting I sent to Chris and this one were purchased when the Walmarts had M2 six-packs on sale for $30 plus shipping. And they were the version of M2 that came with three sets of spare wheels. And if you've ever bought 164th wheels, you'll know that $40 for 24 sets of wheels isn't just a deal, it's a hell of a deal. I wanted them for the wheels. After I pilfered the wheels for other projects, I figured I would still be doing a great car for custom, and Chris is probably going to kick my ass anyway, so stick around.
Okay, so there you have it. I call this one the Grim Reaper. The wheels are actually M2 wheels I stole from yet another car. Uh, I painted the whole car with gray primer, uh, duplicolor, and then I overcoated the primer itself with matte clear enamel, all in the rattle can. This isn't quite the look I was going for, but as Sir Marty would say, I'm happy with that. I removed the plastic side pipes and replaced those with brass tubing. I was going for kind of a backyard road rally look. I was conflicted on whether to use the tires with the stripes out, and then I noticed my little Grim Reaper decal had red eyes and the decision was made for me. I'm excited to see what Chris comes up with. I'll put a link below. Be sure to check him out. There'll be an episode of The Bench after the video for those of you that like that kind of thing. This is Time Rider, and I'll leave the light on for you. So Rob over at Deep Junk Garage is my next victim. I'm going to shoot one of these uh, little Hot Wheels passing gas castings his way, and we'll figure out a day to publish him later, so uh, look for that. Of course, in October, we're painting things pink with the bee feeders and the four horsemen. We'll, of course, memorialize this build with a recap, so if anyone wants to be included who are not among the uh, members of the collectives, let us know and uh, at the Three Blind Mice Diecast channel, and we'll uh, include you uh, in our video. I'm going to wrap up today with a little tutorial about four minutes long. That's why it's at the end, so you can skip it if you don't want to watch it. Uh, it's making glamour shots on the Chi. I think that the glamour shot is a great way to show your project on social media. Not everyone can afford a high-end camera though, but that doesn't mean that you're out of luck. Now I'd love to teach you everything I know about photography, but that video would be 50 years long. But here's the thing, the computer has taken all the skill out of it. True photographers rarely use the auto feature, but it's there. So you're done with your casting and you want to show it in its best light. You probably already own everything you need to make a great glamour shot. I'm going to show you how to take one using a small vise, a block of wood, a piece of cardboard, and a cell phone. Some assembly is required. The block is to raise the vise, and the vise is like a gimbal, because your camera, while smart, isn't designed to be used indoors. Of course, you can do this outdoors, and you'll have absolutely no problems, but I'm using a desk lamp. And so the light is going to be kind of low, and I'll have the room light on too. So what I did here was I just made myself a simple little studio. Um, you can use just about anything to hold the phone. It just needs to be pretty firm uh, because the phone software is going to take a fairly long exposure. And if you want it to be in focus, you have to kind of make a little tripod. And you're fine so long as this aperture is not blocked by anything. I took the cardboard outside and sprayed a couple of swaths on it with rattle can paint, purple, blue, and gray, and then I took this picture. Now I'm going to have to format the picture, and I'll do that with a program that is free on the internet. I've been using it for a decade, I'll wager. It's called IR Fan View. If you get nothing else out of this, go download this software. It's a free application, and it's actually pretty powerful. So first I'm going to open it in from view, and uh, that's what I always call it, but I need to format it in a 16 by 9 form because that's what, uh, you know, most TVs and stuff like that, they're widescreen, and, uh, and I want to get rid of all the extraneous stuff on the outside, so I'm just going to crop it, and there you go, boom, now it's really big, and uh, I need to make sure it's the correct size, so I'm going to put it at 1600, that's the base I use. And I need that number there to be 900. So I change it to 1600 pixels wide. And then I'm going to crop it again. And I'm going to watch this number right up here. And I'm going to change that number to 900. You could also do 1200 by, uh, I believe it's 675 will work. And pull a little off the bottom if you need to, to get it to that 900. 
Once you get it there, you just hit crop. Now, this has a powerful feature called auto adjust, which actually doesn't work too bad. Doesn't change it a lot, just brings out just a little bit. And now you can sharpen it a little bit, which I always do. I usually go about a pixel for every pixel or a number for every pixel. So I'll do this at 16 or so. And I apply it to the image and bang. There it is. There's my glamour shot. Save it under a file name glamour shot. And what do you know your purple people eater flash cider is ready to post, ready to mail, ready to stick on the refrigerator. And you're absolutely right, I did all of this on a PC. If you're doing everything on a phone, can't help you there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and that it finds you healthy, happy, and wise.